Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have exoplanets. One of the first things spoken about in the 12 minute long anonymous video is that around 25 years ago, we didn't know that planets existed outside of our solar system. While that seems hard to believe, that is actually basically true, keeping in mind that this video was released in 2017. The first exoplanets, which are what planets outside of our solar system are called, were discovered in 1992, which is super recently. The video then goes on to explain that today we have found over 3,400 exoplanets that orbit other suns. This may seem redundant or unimportant, but this is a really important part of our search for alien life. With the vastness of space, there are so many places that need to be searched, so we have to find some place to start, and these planets are the perfect place. It is entirely possible that alien life may thrive off of entirely different things than life as we know it. The things we need to survive might be detrimental to alien life, but how are we supposed to know that when we don't know any aliens? This is why we started our search by looking for places with conditions similar to Earth, which we now call habitable planets. Part of a habitable planet's requirements is that they are orbiting a star, but that they aren't too close or too far from it like we are with the sun. So what the video is trying to get across is that while 25 years ago we didn't know any, we now know of thousands of planets that might be holding some kind of alien life. While we haven't found the proof yet, we at least have a pretty stellar starting point. In our number 9 spot we have the woman in the attic. Well. The story behind this picture is extremely chilling, so chilling that I definitely threw on some show tunes and sang for a moment after reading about it. In case you're curious, Wicked is always my musical of choice. Speaking of Wicked, this was not planned, I swear. The woman in this photograph is a real woman who had a wicked mother who locked her in an attic for 25 years. An anonymous tip to the authorities in 1901 was how she was found, 55 pounds in a room filled with feces, old meat, and insects. Thankfully, she was okay health-wise, but mentally, as you can expect, not so much. This is a photo of her and how she was found. Truly horrible to see. While nothing while looking at this photograph and seeing her long brown hair, I'm now convinced that this is where Disney got some of their inspiration for the movie Tangled. There are way too many similarities that I'm sure they took and made a thousand times more light and cheery. In our number 8 spot we have For Sale. This is a photograph from 1948 that honestly at first glance I thought it to be some kind of joke. Maybe the young ones in the photograph were being bad and the mum was threatening to sell them. You know, the old tricks parents would play when children's age wasn't a phone call away. Anyways, apparently this is a picture of something very real that was happening due to poverty at the time and that instantly makes the picture chilling and sad. Apparently the mother and father of these young ones, Mr. and Mrs. Chalofo, needed money desperately and so they sold them. It was said that the mother was paid to stage this photo and perhaps that is why there is an air of phoniness to it, but no later than two years after all of their young ones had been sold to families. In in our number 7 spot we have On the Brink of Death. A man by the name of Robert Overacker decided that he wanted to raise awareness for the homeless. And how was he going to do it? Oh by doing a stunt that would attract the masses. He was going to jet ski over Niagara Falls. And this is a picture of him doing just that. This was the last picture of him taken as he fell to his death as his parachute did not open as planned. Apparently one of the police officers at the Niagara area has said that it would have been like hitting cement as he fell 180 feet. Wow. What a haunting photo to look at. He was only 39 as well. This is why I will never skydive because, well, there isn't a 100% survival rate, so there's that. Also. I'm a chicken, so there's also that. In our number 6 we have the two headed dog. I always feel like puking when I see this photo. It is just the most inhumane thing ever and it makes my heart hurt to look at. This is a photo that was taken in the 50s of the Soviet scientist Vladimir Demikov and his science experiment, the two headed dog. He beheaded the head off of one of the dogs and attached it to the other dog. He sewed their circulatory systems together and connected their vertebrae with plastic strings, and after the surgery was completed, both of the heads could hear, see, smell, and act as a normal dog would. The dog survived only four days before passing away. This scientist's research led to the creation of transplants, but 
Wow, was this a horrible thing to have done. Also, he apparently only did this experiment due to boredom, so perhaps my anger stems from having learned that. In our number five spot, we have Mary Reeser. This is a picture of a blown up Mary Reeser. This picture showcased quite the story from its time. On July the 2nd of 1951 in St. Petersburg, Florida, a woman by the name of Mary Reeser somehow caught fire and all that remained was a part of her skull and her left leg surrounded by her ashes. She was discovered by her landlady and after the investigation, the police were unable to say as to how she could have possibly caught fire. It was this story where the idea of spontaneous human combustion was theorized, but scientists today say that they are almost certain that this could not be the case. But what is weird is that most of her house was largely devoid of fire damage, so it makes no sense. I suppose we shall never know and this picture will continue to scare us till the end of of time. In our number four spot, we have the truck stop killer. In the 70s, there was a killer by the name of Robert Ben Rhodes who would pick up while he was driving his commercial truck across America and then he would kill them. He was suspected to have taken the life of over 50 women. Anyways, when he was finally caught, a picture of a named Regina K. Walters was found along with many other photos of women inside Robert's home. This photo is believed to be taken right before he Regina. Man, oh man, how horrible. This is quite chilling to look at. Sometimes I'm so surprised when evidence like this is leaked to the public. This must have been haunting for her family and friends to see. In our number three spot, we have the Radium Girls. This is another chilling photo of a girl that was a part of the Radium Girls, which were a number of women known for working at factories in the 20s where they were exposed to so much radium that they actually would come home glowing in the dark. Unfortunately, the prolonged exposure caused them to have a series of problems such as their jaws began to swell up and fell off, their vertebrae would collapse, and eventually they passed of cancer. So knowing that this is a pic of one of those women makes this picture so much worse than it looks. However, it does already look like a scary picture of a woman in pain. Pretty scary to think about the amount of people working in factories today or working with technology that might bring about future death that we haven't been able to predict yet. In our number two spot, we have Annalise Michelle. Yeah, this picture will definitely give you the heebie-jeebies even without knowing the backstory. But what if I told you that this is a pic of a woman that was believed to be possessed by the devil? Yeah. This photo just got a hundred times scarier, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, this is a photo of a young lady by the name of Annalise, and she was a pretty devout Catholic German and grew up in the 60s. She was completely normal until she suddenly started hallucinating, eating spiders, routinely convulsing, and oh, just drinking her own urine. She claimed that the devil was possessing her, and she would later go on to have 67 exorcisms. Nothing worked, and she ended up passing away from malnutrition at the age of 23. Her tale is what inspired the movie The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Yep, deeply chilling. In our number one spot, we have The Pioneer's Defense. Save the best for last. This is probably one of the creepiest photos that I have ever seen. This is a historical image taken by the Russian photographer Viktor Bula in 1937. If it isn't creepy enough without the explanation, Here's the explanation. These are people that were part of a Soviet youth group called the Young Pioneers, and they are wearing gas masks because they were in the middle of a military preparation drill, as this was during a time when Joseph Stalin was the dictator and no one knew if death was around the corner. Yikes. Sometimes I am so, so thankful to be alive right now, even though it does seem as if we're going through a bit of a mental war in this day and age, a physical war is way scary to think about being a part of. Starting off this countdown, we have Jeffrey Bezos. In 2019, the founder of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, admitted that his nudes almost got leaked. Basically, someone got a hold of some steamy text messages and nudes that he sent to his girlfriend, and they tried to blackmail him with it. But before they could do so, he came out and admitted what he had done, and he described it in detail. One of his texts said, and I quote, I love you alive, girl. I will show you with my body and my lips and my eyes 
is very soon. Now, any person, celebrity, billionaire or not, probably doesn't want their nudes getting leaked. On top of that, Jeff was married at the time that this information came out, so it looked pretty bad on him. But he claims that he was separated from his wife before dating his new lady. Either way, Bezos didn't want us to see that side of him. And frankly, I don't want to either. In our number nine spot today, we have Dr. Brian O'Leary. One thing Anonymous mentioned in the video was an apparent quote from Dr. Brian O'Leary, who's a former NASA astronaut and Princeton physics professor. The video stated that he said that there is abundant evidence that we are being contacted, that civilizations have been monitoring us for a very long time, and that their appearance is bizarre from any type of traditional materialistic Western point of view, and that these visitors use the technologies of consciousness, they use droids, they use co-rotating magnetic disks for their propulsion systems, which seems to be a common denominator of the UFO phenomenon. I obviously have no idea how I could possibly substantiate these claims, but they certainly are interesting regardless of what you personally believe. This could of course just be nonsense in order to stir up the masses, but it could also be someone who's finally telling us the truth. Truth, but we're all just too skeptical at this point to believe it. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of what Dr. O'Leary said. Do you think it's a hunk of baloney or do you think that he just might be telling the truth? In our number eight spot today, we have the FBI documents. Around the halfway mark, the person in the anonymous video begins to discuss some sort of FBI documents that are apparently unclassified just sitting there on the website. The video claims that the documents suggest that we've not only been visited by aliens from space, but also beings from other dimensions. The video does explain that the document didn't originate from within the FBI, but rather from a university department head, but that the FBI treated the document with the utmost importance importance, which is certainly interesting. It's also very important to note, however, that this document was sent in 1947. I'm not sure if that makes the claims more or less likely or credible, but the timing of it definitely seems important at least to me. While this is one of those things that you have to draw your own conclusions from, in the video it is mentioned that while we are arguing whether or not supposed UFO or alien sightings have really taken place here on Earth or in space, there are real instances of extraterrestrial beings visiting us, but we're just too focused on the debate to open our eyes and see for ourselves. In our number 7 spot today we have esoteric matters. After the discussion of the FBI documents, there is a claim that these beings that have apparently been visiting us are coming not from a planet as we think of it, but rather some sort of etheric planet that interpenetrates with our own, but that we are unable to perceive. Apparently if you're a student of esoteric matters, these concepts will make a lot more sense to you, or so this anonymous video claims. Apparently these alien beings are able to make a conscious decision to enter our plane, and in that same respect they are also to make a decision to disappear from our view. Apparently they are visiting us as they are thinking about settling here on our plane and that they are coming here peacefully. During these visits they are also said to have technology that would destroy any sort of attack made on them, so it is advised that if they do make themselves visible to us, we do not attack or make them feel threatened. I'm not so sure about this one, but at the end of the day I am certainly no student of esoteric matters, so maybe it's just something that my brain cannot comprehend with the knowledge I currently have. In our number 6 spot today we have this UFO footage. This UFO footage is coming from another anonymous video which claims that real UFO footage is always censored and that this video has been previously censored, but they were here to expose the truth. It is unclear where this UFO video was taken and at the end of the day, I'm no expert in debunking these things, so it's tough to say whether or not it's real, but let's all just take a look and you can judge for yourselves. I know that wasn't the most exciting video, but what do we think aliens are going to be doing if they really are visiting us? What do you guys think? Do you guys think that this video is really showing some sort of UFO? And if you do, do you think it's aliens or just some sort of secret project that we aren't privy to? In our number 5 spot today we have Perseverance. 
A point that was made in the video is something that we are actually now watching happen in real time, and that is the mission to Mars for the Perseverance rover that is currently there digging around in the soil. The video stated that Mars may hold signs of an ancient environment that may have been favorable to microbial life. Well, that is exactly true, and the reason the rover is there at all. The Perseverance rover launched from Earth on July 30th, 2020, and made an incredible and successful landing on Mars on February 18th, 2021. While the rover has provided us with some incredible high definition photos of the red planet, which truly are incredible to look at, its main objective is to dig around and search for ancient signs of life, collecting rock and soil samples for a possible return to Earth for further research. While Mars' thin atmosphere is unable to shield the planet from the high amounts of radiation coming from space now, it is thought that the atmosphere did once act as a better shield, and that the environment of Mars may have once been a great host for life, which is exactly why this mission is so important. While when the anonymous video was first released, we were still a ways away from the Perseverance mission taking place, it's really cool to see how it has come to fruition and it's exciting to see the new photos and discoveries that are made each day. In our number 4 spot today we have UFO footage part 2. We have to include just one more video of what is claimed to be proof of aliens visiting us on earth before we get back into the more sciencey top 3 points. This is another video that was uploaded by a member of Anonymous and it comes from 2017. The video features a dark sky but it shows what looks like some sort of aircraft with a few flashing lights and it seems like it is able to basically just hover there. Not long after the video starts another mysterious UFO seemingly joins the first one and the two are just seen floating there. What do you guys think these could be? I obviously don't know what an alien aircraft would look like, so it's tough to say if this is a realistic example or not. All I know is that if this isn't someone playing a trick and they really saw this in the sky, I have no other possible explanations of what it could be. In our number 3 spot today we have Trappist 1. Before I dive into this one guys, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video so far. One of the things Anonymous mentioned in the video was a nearby star called Trappist 1. The video didn't go into too much detail detail about this, but I'm here to do that now so we can all know what they were talking about. While Trappist 1 is a star, the revelation that the video spoke about was that this star has an entire solar system of Earth-like planets. This discovery first came in 2017 and upon further research, in 2018 it was revealed that some of the planets just may harbour even more water than Earth does. Some of the planets are a little too close to the star so the water is more atmospheric water vapour, the ones in the middle have liquid water, like us and the furthest ones have ice. Trappist-1 is now the most thoroughly known planetary system apart from ours, which is kinda cool. While the anonymous video made it seem like there was a full blown advanced alien civilization living in this solar system, there still might be potential for some form of microbial life that we just haven't quite found yet. And that is very cool. In our number 2 spot today we have Enceladus. If you had heard of Enceladus before the anonymous video, there's a good chance you knew it is basically an icy snowball floating around in space, or perhaps you simply knew it as a small moon of Saturn with a diameter of 502 kilometers. but as it turns out, this small moon might hold some pretty amazing potential. It was discovered that this moon has hydrothermal processes going on underneath its crust. To us non-scientists that means next to nothing, but what if I said that means that it just might have all of the requirements for life, and that it is becoming a greater possibility that we might find microbial life there. Basically this moon has an icy shell for a surface and then a rocky interior, but between those two layers is a warm ocean, and this ocean is where scientists think the life is most likely to be. This discovery came almost accidentally when the Cassini orbiter arrived to Saturn in 2005, and it found water plumes shooting out of the cracks in the surface of the moon, which made scientists realize that it just may be geologically active. Through more research and by flying the orbiter through the water, by the time 2005 2015 rolled around, scientists knew that it was holding all of the keys to life. While this little moon was never the original focus of research, it quickly took over with its incredibly exciting potential. In our number one spot today we have Europa. We've got another moon to talk about that was mentioned in the video that also just might be holding the keys to us finding alien life, but this time we're taking it over to Jupiter and its icy moon Europa. Europa has been a point of interest for a while after NASA's Galileo Jupiter probe in the 19th 
1890s revealed an unusually warm spot in Europa's cold surface. In March of 2014, the Hubble telescope detected what scientists thought might be a plume of water vapor, but the caution turned to cautious excitement and optimism in February of 2016 when the telescope caught another, much larger plume in the same spot. This has led to the creation of the Europa Clipper mission. While this mission doesn't yet have a set date, it will see an orbiter flying to Europa to fly through these plumes in an attempt to see what they are made out of, similar to the one we just talked about, to see if it really is holding the key to life, or maybe even life itself. One of the scientists on the Clipper mission, Robert Papalardo, explained that if there is life on Europa, it almost certainly was completely independent from the origin of life on Earth. That would mean the origin of life must be pretty easy throughout the galaxy and beyond. Starting off this countdown, we have the secret entrances. Just last year, a man claimed to have found three hidden entrances that lead to Area 51. He discovered this after using Google Earth. He compared images of the base from different time periods. In one particular area in 1998, there seems to be no roads or entrance. Satellite pictures of that same location in 2005, 2010, and 2013 show a road and a dead end with what looks like an entrance and tunnel carved into a mountain. In fact, at the dead end, there appears to be cars parked there. Seems unusual for people to just park there, because what is around for them to do? Wander the barren plain alone? No, they're parking their cars there and then entering Area 51 through this secret entrance. In our ninth spot, we have Naked Prince Harry. Before Harry met Meghan, he was quite the wild royal and troublemaker. Back in 2012, naked photos of Harry partying up during his trip in Las Vegas got leaked online. Prince Harry was photographed playing a game of strip billiards with his friends in his VIP suite. In the photo, we see Harry holding his junk, while a naked girl stands behind him holding him. In another photo, we see the backside of Harry with his arms wrapped around the naked girl. I wonder what the queen had to say when she saw these photos. Yikes. Coming in at number 8 we have Bill Clinton. It's no surprise that a number of high up powerful wealthy individuals had ties with Jeffrey Epstein, including Bill Clinton. If you don't know the whole Jeffrey Epstein scandal, I suggest you look into it, but it's hella dark and disturbing. He forced a number of young individuals into doing things with him and his friends and anyone else with a lot of money. It's believed that Bill knew what Jeffrey was doing and was a part of some of it. Here is a photo of Bill with one of Jeffrey's victims, Shantae Davies. When the photo was taken, Davies was only 22 years old. She is seen rubbing Clinton's shoulders while they all wait for their plane to Africa in 2002. Apparently, it was Ghislaine Maxwell's idea for the young girl to help Bill out with his stiff back and give him a massage. Although Davies said that that's the most intimate that she got with Bill, it's still a very compromising photo of him. Having connections with Epstein in the first place tarnishes his reputation, one of the reasons why he has tried to bury this part of his past. Moving on at number 7 we have Topless Mark Zuckerberg. Ok, well seeing a guy topless is nothing scandalous, but a picture of Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Facebook shirtless? Well apparently Mark was really embarrassed when this photo got leaked, and his co-worker that leaked it accidentally got in trouble. Let's take a look at this photo, shall we? Sorry, Mark. This photo was taken at some weird private party. Shirtless Mark is surrounded by a number of other shirtless dudes. Like I said, it's not even a bad photo, but Mark was not happy about it going around. Apparently, it was accidentally posted by Facebook's director of engineering, Andrew Bosworth. As soon as he realized it had been leaked, he took it down immediately, but the internet was too fast and screenshotted it. In our sixth spot, we have the Bohemian Grove. The Bohemian Grove is a secret and controversial club that meets in the California woods every year. The club consists of a number of rich men. Among the attendees are past and present presidents, government members, and business leaders. It's kept very hush hush. What happens at this retreat thing stays there. Some say it's a cult, where they do human sacrifices among other illegal and spooky things. But since no one has yet infiltrated the club, we still don't really know what goes on there. 
But there are some photos that have gotten leaked, like pictures of a number of the men in weird cloaks surrounding a burning effigy, to pictures of some of the members seated around a huge dining table. Since this club is so controversial, I doubt the members want their pictures from the club leaked. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Mark Zuckerberg surfing. I'm pretty sure you all have seen this photo of Mark surfing in Hawaii. It became a viral photo and a meme. Why? Well, because Mark has way too much sunscreen on his face. He really packed that on all over his face and it left a very noticeable white cast. I mean, good for him for taking sun safety seriously and you know, skin cancer is no joke. But due to the fact that he became a laughing stock over the photo, I bet he didn't want anyone seeing those photos in the first place. Plus, it kind of ruins his reputation. Like, it's hard to take him seriously with that photo floating around and all the jokes associated with it. Coming in at number four, we have Kate Middleton's topless pictures. Looks like Harry isn't the only one in the royal family to stir up some controversy. Back in 2012, Kate and William were in France vacationing when the paparazzi took some photos of the pair. In the photos, Kate was sun tanning and she was topless. The paparazzi then sold the photos to the French magazine Closer, who then published them. Obviously, she and the rest of the royal family were horrified and took legal action. In the end, the magazine company had to pay 100,000 euros in damages for publishing the photos. And two staff members were fined an additional 90,000 euros to pay to Kate Middleton and Prince William. Pretty sure every copy of this photo has been destroyed. And for Kate's sake and privacy, let's hope it stays that way. In our third spot, we have Barack Obama's party. I didn't know Barack Obama was a big partier, but these photos prove otherwise. Just this year, Barack Obama threw a huge birthday bash for his 60th birthday, but it caused quite the uproar. Why? Well, photos from that night show a room packed full of maskless people in the middle of the pandemic. Especially since Barack is a huge political figure, you would think that he would set a good example, or at least practice what he's been preaching. Either way, Obama was under fire after photos of him dancing at this epic party were posted. In our second spot, we have Prince Harry's inappropriate costume. Prince Harry was quite the royal troublemaker back in the day, making headlines with a number of scandals. Well, back in 2005, Harry was seen dressed up in a Nazi soldier uniform while attending a costume party. The costume consisted of wearing a red Nazi insignia on his left arm. Here are some of the photos from that night. Not only that, but he was photographed drinking and smoking in the outfit, which looks really freaking bad on the royal family. In the end, Prince Harry did apologize, saying, and I quote, I am very sorry if I caused any offense or embarrassment to anyone. It was a poor choice of costume, and I apologize. Let's just say that this is definitely one picture that Harry certainly wants to leave in the past. And in our number one spot today, we have Bill Gates. Bill Gates is another wealthy man who had ties with Jeffrey Epstein. Photographed here is a picture of the two at Jeffrey's Manhattan mansion in 2011. Over the years, Bill has denied his relationship with Jeffrey, but the two were friendlier than he likes to admit. Apparently, the first time they met was in 2011 after Epstein pleaded guilty to some of his crimes. But that didn't stop Bill from becoming close with him. He then proceeded to hang out with him on a number of different occasions. He went to Epstein's Manhattan town at least three times, one of those times being late at night. What were you doing there, Bill? So late, huh? He also flew on Epstein's plane a couple of times. In 2019, Gates said, and I quote, I met him. I didn't have any business relationship or friendship with him. Which clearly wasn't the truth because they met repeatedly. But anyways, it seems like Bill doesn't want anyone to see any photos that he has with Jeffrey. He doesn't want to get roped into the legal and disturbing things that Epstein was into. Kicking off our list at number 10. Late night dip. All right, it wouldn't be a Taylor McWaters list if we didn't mention aliens more than once. This video was leaked last year in May. The footage is actually from 2019. It was recorded in San Diego. The Pentagon has since confirmed its authenticity. The UAP, the unidentified aerial phenomenon here, we don't say UFOs anymore, that's so old school. The UAP is sphere shaped and is flying at extremely high speeds. No exhaust, no propulsion system, just a metal ball whipping by San Diego. The sphere then vanished into the water afterwards. So in case you're wondering, no, it didn't land. No aliens got out. They're like, hey, how fast was I going? No, none of that. We have no answers. 
No answers yet. In our ninth spot, we have the alien craft. What I'm about to show you is a leaked video and some photos from Area 51 of an alien spacecraft test. The video features a flying object hovering in the sky and moving in ways that other crafts definitely don't do. This was recorded on May 15, 2017 and then was leaked years later. If this isn't actually a UFO, then what could it be? That's what's baffling people. The way it just moves up and down and side to side that quickly is very strange, especially because of its size. What do you think though? Is this proof that Area 51 has gotten their hands on an alien spacecraft? Moving on to number 8, we have the transportation of a UFO. When this next photo was leaked online, it was met with a number of conspiracy theories. So this is the image of the CIA transporting a large part for one of their top secret projects. In fact, when this was getting transported, the CIA sealed off the entire highway. And I'm sure you can see why this was met with a number of conspiracy theories. Like look at the shape of the thing that they're transporting. That is definitely a UFO or part of a UFO spaceship. Now this is where it gets even more interesting. Somehow a group of bikers made it onto the road. When they were stopped by some soldiers, they asked what they were transporting. And the soldier said they found a UFO up in the mountains. Now apparently he said this jokingly, but who knows? In our 7th spot we have the Tic Tac UFO. Last year another UFO was spotted near Area 51. This one was given the name the Tic Tac UFO because of its Tic Tac shape and white or bright appearance. So this spacecraft was caught on footage by a person driving along near Area 51. He was driving along the extraterrestrial highway, that's the name given to the highway in Nevada, as a number of UFOs have been seen by drivers while on this route. At first, the driver thought that what he was seeing was just a cloud. When he got closer to it, he realized that it was definitely a craft of some kind. Later on, alien hunter Scott Waring confirmed that the UFO was in fact alien in origin. Also, the area in which he was driving through had a number of wind farms in the area. Turns out that in the past a lot of UFOs have been spotted around wind farms and one UFO even crashed into a windmill many years back. Some say this is because aliens are fascinated with human technology. In our sixth spot we have Stephen Barron. In 2016, UFO hunter Steve Barron captured video and photographic evidence of another alien spacecraft close to Area 51. These were taken near his home in Las Vegas, Nevada, an hour drive from Area 51. Using a night vision camera, Steve head out to Red Rock Canyon to try and capture a UFO. The first couple of hours, there was nothing. Then he saw mysterious weird flashing lights appear over a mountain. He said this in regards to the UFO and its lights and I quote, first one, then two, then more and more. They put on a spectacular show. I am glad I was patient because the show they put on kept getting better and better. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the CIA spy plane. In 2011, Los Angeles Times journalist Annie Jacobson published a book called Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In the book, she included a number of never before seen photos of the base. The first one I want to show you is of a CIA spy plane. This photo shows an A-12 ox cart hidden behind a barrier at Area 51. This was a top secret plane that was created to reach high speeds and altitudes. During the first three years of testing this plane, everything was kept top secret. In fact, the pilots weren't even allowed to tell their wives what they were working on. On May 24th, 1963, during a test flight, the plane crashed. The pilot, Ken Collins, was fine but had to eject himself out of the plane. But afterwards, the CIA actually injected him with sodium pentothal, aka truth serum, to then interrogate him after the crash. That's crazy. In our fourth spot, we have the rare photo. So this photo was also featured in Annie Jacobson's book, Area 51, an uncensored history of America's top secret military base. In fact, this is a very rare photo that has never been published before. It was published for the first time in Annie's book, and that's it. This photo is an aerial view of Area 51 taken in 1964. 
I don't know why it was kept a secret for so long or how Annie got her hands on it, but she did and decided to share it with the world. Moving on at number 3, we have the early U-2 spy planes. In the early 1950s, at the peak of the Cold War, the CIA began to develop planes that they wanted to reach an altitude of 70,000 feet to avoid detection against Soviet radar. This gave birth to the U-2 spy planes that you see here in this picture. This photo was taken in Area 51 in 1956, and pictures a worker standing on the plane's wing. Sadly, at least three pilots lost their lives during test flights, including two at Area 51 and one at an Air Force base in Germany. Coming in at number two, we have Boyd Bushman. Shortly before his death, former Area 51 engineer Boyd Bushman revealed that he encountered aliens while working at Area 51. In a video, Bushman shows a number of mysterious photos to the camera, including one of an alien and a number of photos of the alien's appendages. We have a total of at least 18 that exist and operate with our facility. Now, many people believe that this man is telling the truth. Why? Because he had nothing to gain or lose by sharing his story. Plus, an interrogator with the police studied Boyd's movements and speech pattern during this interview, and he said that it appears as if he's telling the truth. In the interview, he said that Area 51 has at least 18 of these aliens in their facility. He also claims that there are two groups of aliens. One group are called the Wranglers, the others are called the Rustlers. The aliens that are considered Wranglers are friendly and have a better relationship with humans. Rustlers, however, have been known to steal cattle. This is all insane. And in our number one spot today, we have Boyd Bushman and the UFO. During his interview, Boyd Bushman also revealed photos of real UFO spacecrafts that he saw while working at Area 51. Up close and personal, this is a UFO which is ready to take off. So that's a close-up photo of a UFO spacecraft taking off. Then he also showed a different photo of a UFO spacecraft with its lights turned off. Starting off at number 10 now, we have the visitor. This one comes from a Reddit user called Fan and Depressed. They posted this picture with the caption, got a notification from my smart home app in the middle of the night saying, your doorbell detected a visitor. That's all he put and that's all that was needed. He posted it to the creepy subreddit but it has gained over 34,000 upvotes. One of the top comments said, why are you doing this? Because you were home. That's a quote from the movie Strangers, where some twisted home invaders give their reason for terrorizing a woman in her home. It's a great movie and yeah, it does remind me of this too. Can you imagine how terrifying it would be to see this on your phone app in the middle of the night? There was no follow up story to this, I just hope they were alright. Number 9, Talos. Basically I'm here to announce that we're building Iron Man. Tactical Assault Light Operator Suit, aka Talos. It was once a project announced back in 2014, and like the former president said, this was supposed to be a modern day Iron Man suit of armor. Didn't end up being like that at all. It was supposed to change warfare entirely, but five years later, the project was scrapped. Or was it? It probably wasn't. Of course not. We're still working on Apple Watches. You're telling me they're gonna scrap this? Good joke. On one hand, obviously it's hard to do. We could barely launch Google Maps in one go, let alone a suit of armor. I imagine it's complicated. Sure. But with recent leaks, we can now take a peek at what could have been. See, ideally the suit would have given the user advanced tactical awareness alongside advanced military grade armor, which has an exoskeleton underneath that's wired to the helmet and the rest of the suit. You're, you're pretty much Iron Man. They figured out a few things while creating the suit, but overall this Iron Man armor wasn't close to being like what we're seeing on the big screen. We're, we're getting pretty close. We're getting alarmingly close, I'd say. Number eight, the Cola Well. If you dug a hole through the center of the earth and jumped in, would you come out the other side? Of course not, this isn't a cartoon. But the Arctic Circle back in the 70s sure did look like a cartoon. The deepest hole on the planet. Yeah, let's gather resources and focus on this for a bit. Sure, during the Cold War, we love it. Scientists began working on the project in 1970. For many years, Russian scientists in winter coats were drilling a hole, just down, as deep as they could get. What a great job that would be, eh? They got one third through the Baltic continental crust and they found rocks older than two billion years. It was quite the project, it was exciting. But eventually they hit this muddy lava and then in 1992, they stopped drilling. A huge concern here was that demons, demons, 
would be released from the earth. That's fair, that's more than fair, that's, a, that's an okay concern. We don't want those around, I get it. The previous title for the deepest hole belonged to the United States Bertha Rogers Hole, which reached 31,000 feet. The borehole still remains the deepest artificial point on Earth. Now, it was odd for the United States to focus on beating the Russians to the deepest point on Earth. We talk about the space race often, but we forget about this one. The deep hole race. Stanley Yelnats would be so disappointed in us. We gotta talk about this more. Number seven, radar footage. Now normally when we see leaked footage, be it of UAPs or leaked documents, it's always the worst quality, right? It's always taken with like a Blackberry curve. It's hard to believe when military footage is horrible quality. Like we're trying, help, help us, help us help you. Like how can we see photos of black holes and not have a photo of a UAP yet, right? Or do we? Well, Jeremy Corbell is here to help. He took to Twitter in May 2021 sharing footage of US Navy ships being swarmed by UAPs. This time we have radar footage from inside the ship. It came from the Combat Information Center in the USS Omaha. This 46 second clip was originally recorded on July 15th, 2019, and you could even hear a dude in the background yell about how fast the objects in the radar are moving. That's how you know it's authentic. It's a guy like, whoa, that's like, that's crazy. On that ship too, imagine what he's seen and he's surprised. I'm shook. Number six, the Amityville photo. Yeah, a little ghost stuff for us, why not? This photo was taken inside the Amityville house back in 1976. You see, it's the, the boy with the, the eyes. Nice, you got it, nice, good eye. At first, I thought this was from a horror movie. It looks fake almost, or set up, until you start to read the details. See, this photo was taken with automatic cameras equipped with infrared. So this ghost here probably wasn't expecting a selfie, right? Photographer Gene Campbell took this photo in 1976. Gene was working with paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren on this case. Yeah, this was long before the movies. They were just really working on this case in real life. This is history, this is so scary. The photo was revealed three years after it was taken on the Merv Griffin Show, and many believe this is the ghost of John DeFeo, one of the boys who lived there in 1974. Now you can't really do this anymore, right? You can't just whip out photos from an otherwise, you know, crime scene and be like, okay gang, is this a ghost? Let's take a look. No, there was obvious backlash for obvious reasons. It took three years for that photo to reach the public eye, and now all of a sudden everybody is talking about ghosts. Did this help? Probably not. Again, this was long before The Conjuring was ever released in theaters or anything like that. This would have been so random to see on TV. How frightening. Also, who believes in ghosts here? What's the ratio? Comment down below. I'm genuinely curious. I'm like 50-50 in the ghost game. Number five, quantum computer. This next one is pretty scary. Not a fan of this one. Computers are getting more and more advanced by the day. Andrew Garfield told everybody that that Spider-Man leak was fake, and we're all like, okay. We'll believe it. Yeah, we believed it. That's how good technology is. It's getting dangerous. Poor Andrew Garfield, but also poor us. We're for sure doomed any day now. But thanks to our man Snowden, Edward Snowden, it was reported in the Washington Post back in January 2nd, 2014, that the NSA is secretly working hard at creating their own computer. It's called the quantum computer and it cost around 80 million to build. It's a little more expensive than the new iPad. Just a touch. This computer is safely stored in a massive room-sized metal box, not intimidating at all, and it's part of a program called Penetrating Hard Targets. So it can break encryptions for just about anyone, anything, finance records, medical records, your old MSN, hopefully not, but maybe. What a nightmare that would be. The NSA is well on their way to breaking every form of public encryption, so we're doomed. This quantum computer can theoretically break through any RSA encryption as well, which for the average computer today, that takes years. The supercomputer can break through a lot faster. So yeah, you better clear that history now while you still can or else everyone's gonna see. Number four, more government leaks. Even allies of the United States weren't safe during Edwards' leak. Thanks to Snowden, at the end of October 2013, it was leaked that the United States was spying on Germany, France, and Spain, all at the same time. Horrible. The NSA tapped into 35 phones spying on 35 different world leaders, one of which was German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who called out the NSA publicly immediately after finding out and said this act of snooping was just unacceptable between friends. That hits deep, eh? I thought we were friends, we're pulling that card out? Ooh. World leader or not, nobody was safe during these phone calls. It was also reported that the NSA was monitoring calls in Spain for the average folk. Yeah, they monitored around 60 million calls in one month. Imagine how boring that job would be. Just some dude listening like. 
Number three, North Sentinel Island. Heading over to India, this island is home of the Sentinelese tribe, one of the most forbidden islands on the planet. We don't talk about this island nearly enough. It's fascinating and it's also equally terrifying. It's located in the Bay of Bengal. North Sentinel Island is about 1,200 kilometers away from India and while most islands are shrinking or just disappearing, this one actually grew back in 2004. Yeah, the island lifted up a couple of meters during an earthquake, so the west and south sides gained an extra kilometer. Yeah, more room for more inhabitants. Let's talk about them. The inhabitants on this floating cursed island are among the few uncontacted tribes left in the world. They've apparently been there for 50,000 years, and there's no signs of agriculture or even fire, yet somehow this tribe has thrived for this long. And if we try and get close and you know talk to them or see what's up, they try and drive everybody away violently. In fact, back in 2006, two fishermen lost their lives because they got too close to the island without knowing who was on it. The Indian government also didn't roll up to the beach after and start interrogating locals. Instead, they made the island now officially forbidden to enter. So stay away. Number two, the mouse with an ear on its back. <laughs> what a transition, awesome, we love segues. Back in 1997, Stuart Little here became the test subject to determine if scientists could grow cartilage using chondrocytes, aka cells from a cow. And it worked, and now we're still talking about it today, obviously. It all started when Joseph Vicanti, pediatric surgeon, began designing human organs. This was during a shortage, he wasn't just you know bored and started to make ears, he was changing the medical game, and little did he know, he was actually about to change the science game as well. He constructed an ear and then told his brother Chuck and his partner Bob to not bring up the fact that he attached said ear to a live mouse. He's like, please don't mention the mouse, please. How can you not? Here, check out this new ear I made. Hey, one sec, let me catch it. What? That's disgusting, what's going on here? What's this science lab you have? So Chuck spilled the beans. He didn't keep said information to himself. Can you blame him? No. But good thing he leaked the information because now we know cow cartilage can create cells. All because he spilled the beans, nice. Thanks Joseph, and also thanks to that mouse that totally didn't volunteer for this life. Can I Q-tip his back? I want to Q-tip his back. Let's clean that little ear for him, you know? I bet that would feel great. It's like a back scratch, but an but ear Q-tip at the same time. Imagine those mixed. Stuart Little, he's got it. And finally, number one, motorized roller skates. This last one they've been working on for quite a long time. It's one of the craziest things I've ever seen working on this channel, so yeah, I had to end off this list with this. Motorized roller skates, what a dream. Is it happening? Are we close? I sure hope not. This photo was taken at the Sunoco station in Hartford, Connecticut. Context aside, this is an odd one. It's a guy with a briefcase filling up at a gas station and he's wearing roller skates. Is this 2077? No, it's actually 1956. And that futuristic looking man right there, that's Mike Dreschler. He was working for a Detroit skate company and he was very dangerously close to gas powered roller skates. It sounds like something from a cartoon where he's like, oh, I'll get you, pew, and then he blasts off. This would never, don't try this. This is a horrible idea. They would have cost around $250, which today is around 2,400, and its max speed was 17 miles an hour. So you'd still be late and you'd still be buying gas. It was a lose-lose. Imagine this in the closing act of a Mission Impossible movie. How boring would that be? Now obviously the public wasn't supposed to see this. They feared that it would encourage folks to get creative on their own. So yeah, I'll reinforce that. Don't make rocket skates with gasoline. In our number 10 spot, we have the Moko Mokai collection. Well, we are starting off strong with a truly scary and disturbing photo. This is a photograph of a man named Major General Horatio Gordon Robley, who had a collection of 35 heads that he stole from the native Maori people. Apparently in New Zealand, there were people called Maori that preserved the heads of fallen people. The heads were chopped off, boiled, smoked, dried in the sun, and then dipped in a shark oil before being displayed like a trophy. Whoa. They are known as the Moko Mokai. Anyways, these heads were robbed by the British when they moved into New Zealand, and this pic is one of the guys who stole them. Honestly, the man feels just as chilling to look at as the heads. Does anyone else agree? It's probably because he's holding something that looks like it could be a sharp object that might have helped in the chopping process. I don't know, could be just me. Next up at number nine now, we have the mummified captain. This is the disturbing story of Manfred Fritz Bajorat, a German man who was found in his 
his boat by two fishermen off the coast of the Philippines. He was dead. His corpse had been preserved by dry ocean winds, hot temperatures and the salty sea air. It could not be determined how long he had been dead for but he hadn't been seen by anyone for 7 years. He would actually been sailing the world on his yacht for the past 20 years. It is thought that from the way he was sitting, death was unexpected, perhaps from a heart attack. The police said there was no evidence of a second person aboard and no weapon was found on board the yacht. Moving on to number 8 now, we have Home. This is a 1948 picture of a girl who grew up in a Nazi concentration camp. Now She was asked to draw what home was and this is what she drew. The photograph was taken by David Seymour in a home for emotionally disturbed children located in Warsaw. Not much is known about the girl other than her name, Teresa. The swirling lines are a stark reminder of horrors of the Holocaust. More than one and a half million Jewish children were killed in the Holocaust. Those that survived often ended up like Teresa, lost shocked and unable to grasp a simple concept like home. Moving on to number 7 now, we have Obsession. George Karl Tanzler was a radiology technician from Germany. He moved to Florida where he married Maria de Hoyos, a local Cuban American woman. She died of tuberculosis 5 years later despite his best efforts to save her. He wouldn't accept her death though. After her funeral, George dug up Maria's body and took her to his home. He attempted to preserve her. This is the picture of his efforts. He attached her bones together with wire and coat hangers and fitted her face with glass eyes. He replaced her skin with silk cloth soaked in wax. He gave her a wig and filled her insides with rags. He covered her in jewellery and the smell was masked with copious amounts of perfume. The body was eventually discovered by authorities a full 9 years after he first removed her from her resting place. Next up at number 6 now we have the catacombs. This is a very disturbing picture. Please look away now if you are sensitive to death and all that kind of thing. This is the story of Masha, a Ukrainian woman who went out with a large group of friends to celebrate New Year's Eve in 2005. It was a foggy night with temperatures around freezing. The group stumbled into the Odessa catacombs, an ancient tunnel and cave system that spans for over 1,500 miles. Somehow Masha became separated from her group and got lost in the dark. She seems to have wandered for days with no food or water before slipping into a coma and then death. Her body wasn't discovered for months until this picture was taken by some local boys who found her. Still, she wasn't retrieved by authorities for a further 2 years. When a story was shared on reddit, people tried to imagine how terrifying it must be to be lost in the dark like that, pitch black darkness, unable to see any difference between your eyes being closed and open and totally alone. Moving on to number 5 now we have shell shocked. In world war 1 there were hundreds of thousands of soldiers who got shell shock, a type of PTSD brought on from the endless bombardment they had to endure. Ten to thousands of soldiers were treated for the disorder. Victims were said to have a thousand yard stare, looking into the distance as their mind went blank. Here is a famous picture from a soldier during the battle of the Somme, a battle which killed 3 million men. This man appears to be suffering from shell shock. He has a crazed look in his eyes that is often associated with those who had shell shock. It is an image that has become increasingly associated with war, especially the hell that was world war 1. Next up at number 4 now we have the subway. In 2012, the New York Post ran a story with this picture. It was of Ki Suk Han, a 58 year old man who was pushed onto the tracks by a stranger. He was fatally struck by a train seconds later. The suspect was 30 year old Naeem Davis who confessed to pushing the innocent man onto the tracks. The picture shocked New Yorkers and people around the world. Why was someone taking a picture instead of trying to help? Should the New York Post even have ran that story and published that picture? What do you guys think? Next up at number 3 now we have Madame Violet. This is a picture of Violet Spears, otherwise known as Madame Violet. She was the leader of a group of real life vampires in Edinburgh in the late 19th century. They were called the Hive. They became known as lovely but dangerous partiers, seducing men and women with drugs and alcohol and then making them donate their blood to them, so to speak. Some of the victims even joined the Hive and she became their leader too. In 1882 and 1884, she was apparently voted the scariest woman in England, even though she never left Scotland. That's how scary she is. She scared another country she didn't even live in. Moving on to number 2 now, we have the vulture and the little girl. On March 26, 1993, the New York Times shared a picture known as Struggling Girl. It showed a famine stricken boy, initially believed to be a girl who had collapsed from malnutrition during a famine in South Sudan. In the background, a vulture waits patiently. These birds have a keen sense of death and this one has its eyes on the boy. The picture shocked the world. 
The photographer Kevin Carter was awarded the Pulitzer Prize for his photography. He actually killed himself just four months later. The reasons are largely unknown, but many people speculate that pictures like this can drive anyone down a dark path. And finally, number one now, we have the Hiroshima shadows. When the US dropped a nuclear bomb on Japan's Hiroshima, over 100,000 people were killed. Some of them who were close enough were literally vaporized into thin air. The intense heat of the explosion caused what's now called nuclear shadows. The blast forever changed surfaces because of the UV radiation. Surfaces that were blocked by people looked different to its surroundings, leaving a sort of permanent shadow of the person who was vaporized. This is one of the most striking images for me. What appears to be an old person stood at the bottom of the steps. You can even see the cane in their hand. It's a shocking reminder of how destructive weapons of war have become, how quickly life can be snuffed out in an instant, leaving only a shadow behind. Thank you.